Hello everyone, this is Connor from futuresanalytica.com. Today I'm going to be sharing our findings and actual trade data on trading order flow imbalances, as well as presenting actionable concrete steps to take advantage of imbalances in your personal trading. Just a little background on us before we get started, we're a firm specializing in the quantitative research and application of edges involving high frequency price forecasting. Our main edge focus for the past year and a half has been based around order flow and the market microstructure, specifically the imbalances which occur inside of it. We're using an automated trading plugin we developed to automatically enter and exit extremely quick trades based off of clustered order flow imbalances. The goal is to scalp fast inflows and outflows of institutional money to make small but consistent profit. The foundation of our edge theory is originally derived from a research paper published in 2020 by Matteo Peccieri, a current risk modeling and analytics specialist currently employed by Swiss investment bank UBS. And Matteo, if you're watching this, thank you so much for making your research publicly available, and I'd love to chat more about what we found based on your research. And if you're interested in reading the paper, the link is in the description. What I hope to show in this video is to iterate Peccieri's findings in a more digestible manner for the average trader, and to augment and simplify Peccieri's strategy with some improvements that we have made which incorporate other factors such as absorption and market entropy. The rules to trade this strategy are simple. We arm the automated strategy in both directions when entropy is low to take advantage of low volatility forecastable price fluctuations, and disable the strategy or switch the strategy into regression mode when market entropy is high. We also have ways to tune the strategy further if we wish, or instead of keeping the strategy off completely, we can instead arm the strategy in the regressive direction with the implication of taking advantage of price regressing towards the mean. Now I totally get that is a ton to digest and it's probably a bit confusing, but we've provided a much more in-depth and easier to understand explanation of these factors with the material included with the Polarity ATI. And we're going to go over them in this video. So first off, let's establish the relationship between price volatility, entropy, and delta. To do so, we're going to use the Tauchin and Pitts model, which is a regression equation that when completed with market data, validate the relationship between price, delta, and entropy. Whereas when the correlation between delta and price is high, the volatility of an expected return decreases. In layman's terms, when this number is similar to the direction and magnitude of price action, we are safe to arm the strategy for automation. So that's what we did. At market open, we observed that. So we turned on the strategy, got filled, and rinsed and repeated as long as that behavior was continued. You're going to miss out on a lot of, in hindsight, predictable big price moves like I did here. I had the strategy armed that whole time and I didn't capture any ticks on that big long move or this short leg. And if you don't like that, that's totally okay. This strategy might not be useful to you. But we're trying to stay in our lane. We're not trying to predict big price moves or even predict where the market is going to go next. We're specifically targeting ripples in the order book for an almost neutral kind of price action. A sharp jolt-like movement in the bid-ask spread to be more specific. As you can notice, we're only targeting a one point move with a dynamic stop loss with an RR greater than one, meaning we have to be correct more than 50% of the time or we'll lose money. Our stop loss is set at two points initially, and when a profit of two ticks is met, our stop is adjusted to 1.5 points. Over time with commissions, this has made our breakeven win rate to be about 62.96%. So keep that in mind, we have to win about 63% of our trades to turn an overall profit which we are very easily meeting with this strategy. Over the course of a thousand trades testing this strategy, we had a win rate of 86.5%. So there's obviously a very substantial cushion to be made there. And our average loss is 70% larger than our average gain, but we have factored that into our strategy. So going back to market microstructure, if you're unfamiliar, price is truly based on the best bid and the best ask, and a market order is executed at the best of the opposing quotes. Where after that, it follows FIFO, or first in, first out, meaning that a limit order which is submitted earlier at the same price level as another limit order carries priority in being executed. A proponent and inefficiency of this is that market orders never interact with each other. For example, if a buyer and seller both submit a market order at the same time, they do not exchange positions. They will essentially pass through each other on the bid-ask spread and execute on the opposing limit order. This can cause some really weird price movements. And when limit order cancellations are introduced into the mix, things like the flash crash of 2010 can happen, where the Dow lost over a trillion in market value and temporarily became completely unhinged from its underlying value. This crash was caused by over $200 trillion worth of spoofed orders, which were sell limit orders on the order book, which were submitted and canceled before they were filled. 
which caused price to drop. Then high frequency trading firms amplified the magnitude of this to absurd levels. So even though spoofing is now and has been banned, it still occurs, but on a much lower level. What's great about order flow trading is we don't even t look at the order book. We're only taking into account trades that have actually been executed already, which cannot be faked, meaning we can't get spoofed. And we can even take advantage of price movements caused by spoofers. And miniature flash crashes actually happen daily and they can be detected with imbalances in the order flow. So now let's get into order flow imbalances and how the submission or cancellation of limit orders and the arrival of market orders influence a security's returns. Let's reference another study published by Chordia and Subramanyam, who developed and traded a strategy based on order flow imbalances. They compute the order flow imbalance variable, signing every trade with the Lee and Ready algorithm. Bringing together all of the trades, they obtained each order flow imbalance for each stock of the sample, where the results showed a daily average return of 0.09%, and a positive correlation between future price fluctuations and imbalances of about 75%. A 0.09% return might not sound like a lot, but it is very statistically significant when you consider that the one point move that we're trying to capture with each trade is actually only a 0.03% price move. With the leverage that futures offers, this is an extremely lucrative option for consistent daily returns. When you compound this fact that these two were only trading order flow imbalances with no other information, we're able to outperform this figure when we take into account market entropy to filter out areas of unpredictable price volatility. There are other important studies published by Rama Kant or the one by Carl Jessen, which verify these findings with more advanced computational models, such as OLS regression or Garch modeling. Although these studies employed more advanced modeling, they did not take the strategy live, which I think takes precedence regarding the previous study. Regardless of this fact, these are two important supporting arguments in favor of this edge, which is why I included them. So now let's take a look at Bakari's conclusion on order flow imbalances. This is a 3D plot generated with the data from 62 days of trading the same strategy with different volume and imbalance criteria. On the X and Z axis, you can see the very obvious correlation between profit and order flow imbalances. However, on the Y and Z axis, there's almost zero correlation between volume and returns. Now, these are absolutely incredible findings, but we've created an identical strategy with only one difference that makes it even better. This is another 3D plot of the 62 day returns of the same strategy except instead of volume, we're using entropy for our other entry condition. The returns on the X and Z axis are very similar when we're comparing our graph to Picari's, but now we found a very high correlation between the Y and Z axis. We also found that entropy and volume are positively correlated with an R value of 0.65, with a stronger correlation near the average, but almost no correlation at extremes, which would explain the U-shaped distribution on volume-based returns on Picari's graph. When we translate our unleveraged 8% return made over 62 days, that is an average profit of 17.2 ticks per day, which is $215 per day per contract traded on ES, which is the instrument with the most order flow data, which means it's the most suited to this strategy. You might be wondering, this strat is publicly available, why don't hedge funds use it? And why hasn't the inefficiency that this edge takes advantage of disappeared? Because by the way, if an edge is public, the inefficiency which it takes advantage of will disappear. There's multiple factors that play into this. First of all, if you're aware of Jim Simons, uh, CEO of quant fund Renaissance Technologies, who is arguably the greatest trader of all time, he managed this quant fund to have a 39.1% annual net return over 20 years, who turned 40 million into $100 billion, which is a 250,000% total return. And that's after taxes and fees. And three fourths of their edges developed over that 20 years have completely lost their profitability. And he said that the edges that stayed were non-statistical based edges. So edges found via looking for an edge in price movement. Instead of going the other way around, like the strategy we were using, where the strategy was theorized on market structure reasons, and then we looked for if it had predictive power, which is the exact opposite of a stat-based edge, where a market period is selected and an algorithm is developed to predict that specific price movement. A good example of a statistical based edge are almost all price action indicator type strategies such as an Ichimoku cloud or the MACD, where they can be overfit to work in a certain time period, but once the market changes, there isn't an edge there. There's nothing wrong with these, it's just I personally want to have consistency over a very long period of time, and I'm willing to take the lower profitability in the short term to do so. The other reason for this being a great option for retail is that this is a strategy that's basically inaccessible for hedge funds. To remind you guys of how small of a price movement we're capitalizing on and how much money you're moving when you're trading futures, 
We're trying to get a 0.03% price movement, and we're opening and closing this position within 15 seconds. Although the margin required is only $500 for each contract, ES has a notional value of $180,000. So for each trade, we are flowing $360,000 through the market per contract in that short time period, just to potentially make $50 per contract on a trade. We're trading six contracts in this video, so we're effectively flowing $2.1 million of money in and out of the markets with each trade. Hedge funds have hundreds of millions of dollars under asset management, and target annual returns are around 8 to 9%. So this to be worthwhile for them, even as a small auxiliary strategy, they would need to have hundreds of contracts with a notional total value of about 25 million, which is no big deal. Funds can easily scale into a liquid instrument such as SPY over time, but this strategy relies on fast execution of market orders to even work. And with that many market orders, it'll blow through the order book and they will not only place a giant target on their back, but will move price massively when entering. And then when they exit, they now have to place hundreds thick limit orders for their profit target and hundreds thick stop loss orders for their stop loss. Both of these orders are so big that they'll either not trigger at all or price will move down completely when they're executed, causing huge asymmetrical losses for them. Honestly, I'm just really tired of the fact that quantitative edge research has been made pretty much unavailable to the retail trader. And the extent of which that has has been available only on rudimentary backtesting with stat based strategies, often with a lot of overfitting. Not to rag on other strategies at all, I'm making no claims that mine is the best out there as I know very many who do well trading stat-based edges, or just discretionary price action. But I know a lot of people who are very disillusioned with these kinds of edges and I want to offer a new, at least to retail, perspective on quant trading. I have other strategies based on non-order flow microstructure in my back pocket, but I haven't primarily been focusing on them as I want to create consistent content with just one, based on order flow. And although I've shown you guys other ways to trade order flow imbalances before, this type is probably the most raw, but also has the, high, the lowest profit ceiling, as it took me six entire contracts to get a solid daily profit with that low RR that it has. Anyway, we had two back-to-back -back trades there, which ended the trading day, and uh, we got over $3,000 of profit in just a few minutes trading the strategy, so I'm super stoked about that. Also, super happy with the community right now. I've uh, been seeing some great video videos posted recently on Polarity. Um, this one dude has been posting every single trading day using Polarity and has not had a single losing day since regression came out. So he's on like a 10 day win streak now and up like $11,000. So super stoked, uh, good for him. Absolutely love the community content, whether it's losing days, winning days, there's just so much to learn from you guys about how to make this system better. And my favorites are videos of you guys uh, posting videos of using Polarity in ways that I haven't even thought of before. Just absolutely love the creative content, just shows there's so many ways to use the system and I'm super stoked for the future. Anyway, thanks so much for making it to the very end of this video and subscribe and comment down below if you like these kinds of quant explanation videos. I love delving into these kinds of things and if you guys are interested, I can maybe turn this into a series with other types of non-stat based strategies. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys really soon.